Hello everybody, my name is Brett Hall, and uh, today we're going to talk to you about some of the brand new features in Communications Manager 12.5. Uh, the top three features in my mind that, that at least we'll go over today are around uh, smart licensing, uh, the configuration of a Jabber profile, the, the traditional Jabber config file that uh, used to be in XML format is now in the, in the Call Manager GUI, and then last but not least we're going to talk about the secure activation codes that are now part of 12.5 that should helpfully help with uh, with you onboarding your uh, your new devices across your enterprise. So with that said, let's go ahead and start off with uh, smart licensing. So the smart licensing portal um, is uh, is located at software.cisco.com. Let me go ahead and log in and. Um, then I'll show you what I mean. Oh, crud. Cisco has this two-factor authentication that's mandatory that I'm sure it's more secure, but sometimes it's uh, kind of bothersome. All right. Now that it's approved, we should be able to log in. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the one of the most important things to know about is that in uh, Call Manager 12.5, smart licensing is a requirement, which means no longer uh, are you able to license your cluster using uh, either Prime License Manager or Enterprise License Manager. All of your licenses now exist on the, the smart licensing portal. Okay, so we're going to show you what that looks like. Um, but if you go to software at cisco.com, go to license, and then go to software licensing, we will be able to look at the inventory. And so I've um, got a bunch of preloaded licenses up in here already. These are my tokens, and uh, these are my individual licenses. So I have all the different licenses that are available for my on-prem architecture. I have uh, your cool licenses, but I also have things like Unity and uh, Emergency Responder. And so in order to register your cluster to the Smart Licensing Portal, uh, simply uh, you go to Inventory and uh, do no New Token. I've already done that and I've registered it. Uh, so typically what happens is you have the ability either to A, click on this blue arrow and copy this token, copy this hash file, or you have the ability to click on actions and then you can um, download the, the file and then upload it to uh, your call manager cluster. Uh, or certainly, as, as you see, you have the ability to revoke licenses here as well, which means you have the flexibility of moving your licenses around now. No longer um, are they stuck on your existing cluster. You can move licenses around freely as you, uh, you downsize potentially uh, your cluster uh, and then scale up other different clusters across your enterprise. So now that I've shown you that, let me log into my current uh, communications manager cluster and, uh, and show you what it looks like from a software licensing perspective. As we wait for it to log in, uh, you can see now I am on 12.5. And to view the licensing, it's in a similar location as it used to be. Uh, you'll scroll on to System and Licensing. And hopefully you'll see the registered status once you upload your token or you assign your token to your cluster. As you can see, I have plenty of licenses here. And um, I have a number of licenses that uh, that are still available if you remember the uh, the count that I showed earlier from the software uh, licensing portal. So um, simply um, just make sure you have your uh, your details here and you're assigned and uh, for, for, for this particular deployment I guess you should be aware of uh, my clusters talking directly to the smart license portal for certain other customers that, uh, that maybe have a little more stringent security requirements, 
you do have the ability to deploy something called a satellite server in which uh, it almost kind of acts as a proxy. Uh, the communications manager talks to the satellite and the satellite talks to the, the Cisco software portal. Uh, the other way to do it, which I don't have uh, configured here in, in my current environment, is around something called specific license reservation. And again, those license uh, reservations are really not the Cisco preferred method any longer. Those are really meant for customers across the Department of Defense uh, or, or federal in general that happen to have uh, air-gapped environments, meaning they don't have the ability to connect to the cloud. So they have to reserve the licenses in the portal and then manually enter a certain code or key on their communications manager cluster. So that's the first thing we talked about. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is around the configuration file of, uh, of Jabber. Your, your Jabber config.xml file is now located in a call manager GUI. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So under user management and user settings, we have the ability to go to a UC service. And there's a new UC service called Jabber. And again, I've already taken the liberty of configuring this inside the uh, communications manager. But you can see the service type is now the jabberconfig.xml file. In the past, previously you had to open a text editor up and you had to understand the XML, uh, the syntax. Uh, the documentation was okay and so you could go in there and copy the syntax and modify the file. But you always had to be very careful in how you save the file and you always had to make sure you uploaded that jabberconfig file to each and every individual subscriber in your call manager cluster. After you uploaded to the subscriber, you then had to restart the TFTP service on your subscriber. So it's kind of a pain in the butt, especially if you had a lot of different subscribers in your organization, or uh, God forbid you had multiple clusters that you were trying to upload these, uh, these Jabber parameters to. So if we go under this new executives service, you can see I've enabled a certain uh, number of policies, uh, such as single sign-on and uh, forwarding a voicemail. Uh, again, maybe for our executives, we want to enable something called persistent chat so that they always have the full context of their previous chats and their previous experiences they've had with their contacts. So once we've done that, uh, we simply apply the UC service to the service profile. And uh, let's take a look at how you do that. Again, I only have one service profile here, but you know, in um, in theory, you could have many, depending on the different types of uh, users and uh, services that you're offering to your users. Uh, this this new service is basically located at the bottom, and you can see Cisco did a pretty good job here as well, and that. They understand that there could be different policies that exist for, you know, Jabber devices that exist either on a common area uh, devices like um, like a kiosk or, or a PC um, or your personal desktop or your mobile device. You know, maybe your mobile device needs to have much more stringent security because there's much more threat uh, of it getting lost or stolen. Uh, in this case, I've only assigned the profile to the desktop, and um, once you do that, you hit save and you're on your way. So pretty cool, uh, pretty straightforward, right? The next thing and the last thing we'll talk about today is around secure activation codes. And this is something that, uh, that, that I know the field has been asking for uh, for a long time, and, uh, and frankly, um, there was a huge gap for a long time. Um, the, the, there are some customers that were doing things with Axel to automate the deployment of devices. Some customers may be familiar with uh, the use of bulk automation tool or BAT, but frankly the documentation wasn't that good and so uh, I don't think BAT was very heavily used amongst customers or partners. So you know, in 12.5 you have this idea of secure activation codes and we're going to take a look at how to configure that. The first step is to go into our device, device settings, and device defaults. 
And what we need to do is we need to set our onboarding method to um, activation codes. So I'm going to scroll on down to my 8865, which is the one device I've set for activation codes. And you can see you have two options, either auto registration or activation codes. Once you um, hit save, you simply go to your phone or device phone and uh, add a new phone. So I'm going to go ahead and add 8865 because that's what I just selected. And I want to select this first checkbox to require activation code for onboarding. Um, I still need to go in and select some of the mandatory parameters like device pool and, uh, and phone button template. So let me just go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assign this to a user, in this case myself, uh, because from an onboarded perspective, we have two different options. You have the ability to distribute that activation code to a user, or you can ask the user to log into their self-care portal and, um, and download the activation code that way as well. So it's pretty thoughtful and intuitive for the user. Once I add my device security profile, uh, we'll be ready to go. Uh, let me just do the SIP profile. And while we're waiting for it to save, let me go ahead and apply. And uh, a few different things here, right? Um, hopefully you've noticed that I didn't have to specify a MAC address when I added my device. That's something that's probably um, something that's new to you um, because it's always giving you an error message. Uh, usually you have to throw some sort of dummy MAC address in there in order for call manager to add the device. In 12.5, it creates a dummy MAC address for you, as we see here. The second thing you'll see here is also the activation code. So I can click on that link and also um, view the activation code. So now I can copy this activation code. I can take a screenshot of, of it. I can do whatever I want to, uh, the activation code, and um, distribute it to the user. Or, again, the other option is to um, let the user... Uh, get the activation code himself and register the phone to the cluster himself. So if I log out of the call manager GUI and log in now to the self-care portal, you'll, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So now that I've log logged into the self-care portal, you can see um, I actually have two phones that require activation, but, uh, but I simply just click on this gear shift here and I can view the activation code this way. So I have two options. I can either, again, jot the 16 digit character down and, uh, and, and use the phone's keypad to type in the digits myself, or I can use my camera on my iPhone, take a picture of the QR code, and then scan it into the phone using the IP phone's camera. So pretty intuitive. Uh, there's a lot more here that I didn't really discuss today, such as the use of a uh, bulk automation tool to, uh, to generate activation codes to do a bunch of phones at once. Um, there's also the ability to, uh, to get all the different MAC addresses of the phones that you want to add to the cluster. And so in, in some way you're actually doing secure activation because you, you have two-factor, you have the PIN that you just generated, and you actually have the MAC address of the phone. Um, but, but hopefully you'll see here that uh, there's a pretty new innovative features here in 12.5. Take a look at the release notes and, uh, and see what other features could be beneficial to you and your enterprise. And, uh, and good luck! Let me know if you have any questions about this. Have a great day.